Hey all, this is Isaiah Stanback. Big Nate Newton and I would like to thank the Niagara Corporation for their sponsorship of this week's episode of Let Me Tell You Something. In case you're not familiar with Niagara, they're the country's leading manufacturer of water-conserving plumbing products. Products that save real money, like Niagara's stealth technology toilets that reduce water usage by up to 60%. Niagara also works with affordable housing projects and commercial multi-unit properties to save water usage in dollars where it's needed the most. So, if you want to conserve water and save money, check out NiagaraCorp.com. What's up, good people? It's your boy Isaiah Stanback back in the building for another episode of Let Me Tell You Something. And as always, I'm here with my big dog, Nate Dog, in the building. What's up with you, Nate? Well, I've been uncle, I've been this, I've yeah, been that. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah, you big got, dog, yeah, you so got big been... dog, Nate Dog, D A Double G. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> stupid the house. Exactly. I like that. Exactly. Yeah, wow. What's up, man? Y'all don't. No, 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 I don't do that, Nate. You don't stoop double G. I'm not that West Coast. Okay. I'm not that West Coast. Okay. How you feeling after last week? You know, we all we usually talk about this uh this this Cowboys thing for at least a hot second. You 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 doing all right? I'm gonna say it with my chest. Oh, already. Stop the run game. Ooh. Do your job. DYJ. Yes. You we gonna get some t-shirts and say DYJ? We got to, man. Who did not do their job last week? If you guys don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about the Dallas Cowboys dropping a W, or now it's an L, uh, over there against the Green Bay Packers, who had been struggling prior to meeting up against Dallas last week. The front seven, mainly the front four. Mm. They hit our corners, man. Like like a NASCAR guy going around an oval <laughs> track, dog, F1 out there, outside huh? Outside and up high every time, man. But, but Nate, dog, so everybody's talking about this containment, right? Contain, contain, <laughs> yeah. contain. Right. Yeah, you're talking about Micah Parsons being able to grab the edge, you know, and capture and forcing everything inside. I felt like they were there. I felt like Micah and and D Law and and Armstrong. I felt like all those after guys the first six runs a, after yeah, yeah but the first but, six run with nobody there. But the thing is, they were out there. Yes, but when you're when you're opposing team, your offensive line, you're pulling guards and tackles like we talked about. Yeah, okay, you're kicking those guys out. So even if you have outside containment. It doesn't mean that you really have containment That's because right. they're pushing you out towards the sideline. So what do you do? You, hey, you got to bring them safeties up in there. You got to bring them corners up in there. You got to bring smoke. Thank you very much for <laughs> dropping some wisdom on the people because everybody's talking about the front four, the front seven, but run defense is collectively an entire defense. That means that your secondary needs to have run support. And the Dallas Cowboys, it's my turn to say it with my chest now, Nate. Right. You know, we, this is this new segment right here. Right. Say it with your chest. Yes. Right, yes. You say it with your chest. So Nate Dog said, said with his chest and said, stop the run. I'm going to say it with my chest right now. This Dallas Cowboys secondary doesn't want the smoke. Wow. They don't want the contact. You got Donovan Wilson as one of the few that's coming up there and laying hat, but he's just doing that. He's right. laying hat. He ain't wrapping up. Right, right. He don't have enough nickels in his back pocket to bring <laughs> to bring the pain on some of these guys that are around the league nowadays. You talk right. about an AJ Dillon for Green Bay, six foot, two hundred forty seven pounds. Some one hundred and eighty pound safety ain't going to do nothing to him. No, nah, not, right? not not repeatedly. Not repeatedly. And then yeah. you got Trayvon Diggs, the All Pro, you know, big time cover corner. He doesn't want any part of tackling anybody. Wow. Wow. You disagree? I, you know what? My eyes told me to agree. Ooh. Even my heart. Ooh. I may not want to agree. Okay, so the real. My eyes told me. Facts I versus have feelings. To agree. That's right. Facts versus feelings. That's we hit right. on that early That's after right. a long time ago. Right. Wow. Mm. Man, let's lead that, man. Okay, I know we'll lead that. That's, that's got, in the past. We turn the page. Heart just okay. hard. Let's go forward. You, how you yeah. feel about this coming week against the Minnesota Vikings? Kirk Cousins, Van I mean, Mr. Jefferson, Mr. Thielen, Mr. Cook, Mr. Hawkinson. Do your job yeah. and, and and that's all the young boy parsons it took parsons going back to linebacker uh -huh. to realize like whoa these big boys up front <laughs> need to get in their gaps yeah because people get not a hey, he had to deal with them 300 pound guards he can run around a 300 pound tackle but, they but at it's you. hard to run around a guard that's coming straight at you yeah what, what's, what's the mindset take us into the mind of mr nate newton when big nate is pulling 
right? You got the ball is snapped. All right, you pull, you put your foot in the ground, you take your little J step, right? You come around, and now you're coming back out to, towards a, maybe adjacent to the line of scrimmage or maybe even up the field a little bit, and you see a young 250-pound young man sitting out there. How, what's, what's your mentality? I, I'm praying he don't go for my knee. Okay. I'm praying because I'm go, I'm dropping down low. I'm getting a better base stance. Yeah. Because I'm finna lift him up out of Ooh, there. Like, forklift. Oh, oh, yeah, like a D9 tractor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. If I can get my hands on this cat, man, I'm finna lift him up out of there and throw him out the club. Throw him out the club. No white tees. Bouncer Nate. That's what they would call him. <laughs> Bouncer Nate. So you're saying if if Michael Parsons and, and his company don't shoot at these pulling tackles, guards mm -hmm. with a center, whoever right. it is, if they don't shoot at their knees, you're saying they don't stand a chance. They don't stand a chance. Chance. All you can do then is try to square up, right? You know, that ain't going to work. Because that's 300 pounds because of momentum. Because I'm going to engulf you. Yeah. Even if you stalemate. Man, T-Pilot, a, a Zeke, they gone. Yeah. And if you try to stay, stay up high, Ooh. oh, my God, your kid's going to be like, Daddy, oh. Oh. that's a grown man you went up against. It ain't like when you spank <laughs> us. <laughs> so you're saying that opposing offenses have all the confidence in the world when they start pulling it. Because you're starting to see it yeah. every week. Yes. Every every single team that Dallas Cowboys defense faces is starting to pull guards and tackles. Even guys that ain't really even athletic. It's not even yeah. in their scheme. Yeah. But they, 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 hey, they're putting it in for this week. That's right. So now Dalvin Cook comes. That boy, that little boy, that boy, he legit. <laughs> he was running it three years ago when it wasn't fashionable to run. The NFL run game is coming back to the NFL. Yes, it is. So now it's a part of the NFL again. And he loves playing against yeah. Dallas. Yeah. Florida State uh, Florida State kid, man, from, from down there in the bottom to muck, man. Uh -huh. So if you're, yeah. Dan, if you're Dan Quinn, what's your, what's your pregame speech? What are, you, what are you telling these guys? Because if you're saying that physically, the only thing they could do is dive at these guys' knees to stop this running game, what, 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 what do you tell them? I'm, I'm talking mainly to Bohannon, Gallimore. Okay, the big fellas uh, inside. Osa. That's who I'm talking to. Fellas. Not, not Hankins? Yeah, uh, Hankins. I'm sorry. Okay. He, he's new to the game. Fellas, the run has to be stopped. It, not stopped, but snuffed out. Mm. And I'm telling people, it's all right if you can just, if you want to force them to the outside and your corners come up and make plays or your safeties come up, that's cool. Yeah. But they can't pick and choose. They went out, out, out. Then all of a sudden, Inside, inside, inside. You can't let them pick and choose. Yeah. And uh, you got to keep that average around 3.5, right. 3.7. That average cannot be 4.3 or, or above. Ugh. They're going to continue to run. Yeah. And you will never rush the passer again. What did they say this week? Dan Quinn said rushing the passer is a privilege. Yes. It means yes. You got to stop the run first. And, and Michael Parsons sounds like he's a little frustrated, too, because he said it's not going to stop. Every team's going to do this until we yeah, show we can stop Because it. he figured out, see, you started this party, Parsons. <laughs> you started it. Hey, oh, meet me at the quarterback. Ooh. Well, guess what? Quarterback ain't going to have the ball. No. Nah, the running back going to have the ball. And see, he had to go and play Mike Backer. And Will Backer. Look like a fish like, out of water. Why can't I just run through these gaps? Look like a fish out of water. Yes. You, Whose fault is that? That that's is that Micah's fault, or is this, is it the scheme of this defense and where they have isolated him, and the defensive end position? It's his fault because he was too good at defensive end. <laughs> Wait it's, a minute, talk about that. And it's coach on, fault. Nick. It's coach fault because they got greedy. They got greedy. He is a linebacker. Okay. He is a space guy. And, and me, you, and other guys that know this game, he's a space guy. Don't line him up in one spot every time. Every time. It works, it, it works when it's passed. The NFL is too smart. But if you'd have been kept him at that Mike linebacker, and change, use oh, let him hit them A gaps, let him run downhill running, let him cover a few guys coming out of Because everybody ain't like Dalvin Cook. Mm -hmm. Everybody can't get rid of this Get rid of this kid. This kid cover skills is nice. I, you know what? But Dan Quinn, he band-aided a lot of this, but now he's going to have to tell his guys, hey, Put up a shut up, man. You going to, Bohannon, put up a shut up. Uh, Armstrong, put up a shut up. You know, uh, even even D-Law. You know, he runs down a lot of stuff from the backside, but he the point of attack, he was getting caught too. D-Law D -Law yeah. actually had his best game in my opinion. Yeah, but he was hitting gaps. Okay. So 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 when, yeah. so when you start talking about this running game, this running defense. Okay, yeah. I mean, we we gonna get be done with this here in a second. But 
They got some dudes they're about to face the rest of the season, Nate, dog. Let's go ahead and go down the line, okay? Minnesota Vikings, they got Dalvin Cook. Yes, sir. New York Giants. Oh, the close thing to Barry Sanders. If this kid can ever stay healthy and get his full <laughs> confidence, that's the close thing I've ever seen to Barry Sanders. They got Sa- Saquon, Mr. Saquon yeah. Barkley, right? Yes. Uh, then you go to the Colts. Who the Colts Donald got back? Taylor. Mm, they got that boy that Taylor. That dude just cold, man. Mm-hmm. He, is, he is a running back, running back. He's just a running back, running back. And then you He'll go to, run it. Then you go to the Texans, and in my opinion, mm-hmm. the most violent running back, running back in the right, league right, right now, Damian Pierce. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've not seen much of him, so I Ooh, can't. Ooh, Nate, you're going to like him. him. Earl Campbell reincarnated. Wow. Earl I, Campbell. You know I don't I don't attach right. greatness to, to too many people. Yeah. The boy runs violent. Wow. Like Marshawn. Like, <laughs> I hear you, dog. Like, like I, if you need more people. <laughs> right, right. You need more people to get me down. Yeah. I can't talk about the whole team and, now, but at him? It's yeah. like what you're saying, gang tackling. He's taking it to a whole new Absolutely. Meeting. Absolutely, just just violent runners. You've seen those in the past, right? Okay. Right. Um, then you go to the Jaguars. You got was it Etienne or something like that? That dude's that dude nice. Elusive, yeah, very he's elusive. Nice. And then you go to the Eagles. This is the whole offense just runs the ball. Then you got the Titans. That is that that. <laughs> you know what, and man? Then, and then we finish Stop off. Stop. Then you finish the off run. with Washington, and we know Washington runs the ball. Stop. The so run. your next. Eight games, Nate, are against teams that run first. Stop the run. That's all I'm going to say, man. I'm through with it. Mm. Stop. Do. Let me tell you something. Do your job. Yeah, then do that job. Speaking of do your job, Nate, I, I, I got some work to do starting next, starting next week, man. Okay. You know okay. why? Because Thanksgiving is next week. Yes, sir. Thanksgiving is next week, and your boy got to eat. Your boy got to eat. Do, do you? What, what's your, I need to know what your favorite... Thanksgiving dishes. Just a, your favorite dish. Uh, uh, my mom's turkey. Okay. The way she used to cook it. Okay. Was that how? How like, did she make it? Uh, I don't know. I, I never watched this, eh? I never. All I did was devour it. You know what I'm saying? It's, well, it's so you tell, you, that you tell moms, DYJ, that, do yeah. your job. <laughs> you know, I just, uh, every now and then I watch her put some stuff in there and be like, uh-huh. why are you putting that stuff in there, man? Let that, let that thing yeah. just heat up on its are own. Are you a stuffing dude? You like stuffing? Uh, yeah, man, my mom's. I would eat yeah, hers. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to tell you that, man. That That is it, man. And uh, my mom had a way with that. And she had a way. I don't eat this no more. She had a way with some chitlins. Uh yeah, I don't even eat that no, no more. No, Nate. I don't eat that no Nate, more, Nate, tell man. the people. Some people don't know what chitlins are. Chitlins are the intestines of a, a pig, a hog, or whatever you want to call it, a, a big 400-pound rodent. A lot of people you know, a lot of people don't deal with them pigs, you know. Yes, sir. You don't deal with them, huh? No. I don't <laughs> but, I, but you know what? I respect where eating chitlins came from. Right, right. right. Okay? That comes back from way <laughs> right. back. That's, that's yeah. slavery days Everybody right there. Everybody threw it away. You made yeah, it work. Yeah, you, you had to eat what you, what you had, yeah. right? That's what they had access I'm gonna, to. I'm going to tell you what broke me. Four years ago, my wife had all these chitlins. The wife? His wife yeah, my wife, yeah, my wife had all these chitlins in the sink. I said, baby, Ugh. I'm finna help you. Clean these chitlins. No, you didn't, Nate. Yes, I did. So she's like, okay, I'm going to rinse first. Oh. Then I'm going to let you clean. I'm going to show you how to clean. Um, then we're going to let all the water out, clean out, get all the good, and then we're going to run it back to did, did, another were you, time. Were you aware of the cleaning process at that yeah, time? Yeah, I, I see my mom in there struggling with it over the years. But Isaiah, when we got to that third washing, I looked at my wife. I said, understand me. This will be the <laughs> last time. This will be cooked in this house. <laughs> Baby, what you mean? I say, I've been eating this all my life. Yeah, you never seen this. <laughs> and, and you know what? No, sir. I say, I realize that these, this is what is coming through these intestines. Yeah, buddy. God is real, y'all, because he can clean. <laughs> now, we got intestines. Yeah. And it filters. Yeah, straight to the pooty And it still stinks. Rooted to the tooty. <laughs> <laughs> I told my wife, not in here. Yeah. I said, you can eat it. Mm-mm. Cook it over your sister's house. Clean it over your sister's house. Not him. Yeah. It's been it's been three years. My wife like, well, if you do you feel that way, we I won't eat. I said, that's right. Go over to your sister's house. Yeah. I don't even think she eat them no more. Yeah. Because when you when you look, come, come on, man. You know what's coming through these. Bro, I I know. 
the intestinal tract. And her sister talking about, well, I put onions and I do oh, this. Dog, I, I said, I don't care that. what you do. <laughs> you know what comes through this? Yeah. And you running this through your system in your house. What's up, man? Hey, come on. That's that's perfect because <laughs> I love mac and cheese. Right. Okay. I I make so many mac and cheeses. I make Oh, them. you do? You've brought yeah, it to us. Yeah, baked mac you and cheese, us. smoked mac and cheese. My wife thinks she's better than me at it. So we're gonna I like, bring me the uh the just the bait. Just the bait. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Bring me the bait. Bring me yeah. the bait. Okay. So yeah. yeah, so the wife and I have a little competition with it, you know. So and then I make the make turkeys. I do a smoked turkey and I do a deep fried turkey. So I got some work to do next week, Nate Dog. But man, you do it, a deep tur- you do a fried turkey. Oh yeah, I do a deep fried turkey, Nate. It's, it's interesting though because you well, know well, have you, you you've never brought us another fry. I never brought you another fry. Okay, I want bake. <laughs> if you do it, bake. Uh huh. Macaroni. Okay, and you want uh, uh, the deep fry? Just taste. Okay. I don't need it. I don't need okay. but just piece of leg. All right, I got you. Piece got of leg. I get you hooked up. Oh, you know we yeah. work on Thanksgiving. Uh, we work on Thanksgiving. Yeah, so. but I can work on that you in work. between. <laughs> <laughs> so we're I'm, hey, if we're sleeping in the post game, y'all know why. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we got the wow. itis over there. No, but I want to ask you about that, Nate. Obviously, because I mean, not only is Thanksgiving up, but you know, we both made some decisions in our life in terms of our health and our well being. Right, right. And and everybody knows you as as, as Big Nate Dog. I still call you Big Nate yeah, Dog, but yeah. you ain't nearly as big as you used to be. No, nah, no, nah, I, I would I would be anywhere. During the season, never higher than three forty-five because I had to be able to drop ten or twelve pounds, so I wanted to spend a hundred dollars a pound, <laughs> yeah, you know, buddy. per day. Yeah, so I had to be always close to that three twenty, so I, I can get fifteen pounds off real quick, or yeah. close to it. But then during the off season, I'd be in the weapon like three forty-five to four eleven. Four eleven? Yeah. Now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. Four eleven, Nate. <laughs> like, like Pride. What's they doing all season? Now that's funky size. Now. Man, that's funky so size. man, so give everybody an understanding of of the decisions that you made. Because obviously, that's when you was playing ball. Yeah. Okay. When you play ball, you need to get that up off you. Yeah. Okay. What What was the light switch for you that made you say, you know what, I need to make some changes? And what changes did you make? I, I, I had got out of football. Okay. And you know, like you say, I could get it all. You know, working out, moving around, just change a little bit of the diet with me. Working out, a young man, I could take it off. Boom, I could take off. So, six. so you said you got up to four eleven. Yeah, and then, I, and I then would do it, this almost every off season. And then in the season, you would drop down to oh, three twenty. In six weeks, I would lose about eighty pounds. Sometimes I drop down to three twenty from four eleven. Just messing up my heart. We talking about just ninety pounds of just gain drop, gain, gain drop. drop, gain drop. On average, on average, I say seventy pounds. Gain drop, gain drop. Why are you looking at me like Nick, that? Man? That's a lot of weight, man. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I used to go to my trainer. They used to call it the fat farm, Coach Johnson, all the <laughs> Nate. Nate's at the fat farm. Don't worry about him. He'll come back all right. You know, I like, I was just doing what I had to do. I was having fun. What was your favorite meal back then? And still to this day. And still to this French day. French fries. But how many were you eating? At 411 uh, pounds, how many were you eating? A bag of or out of French fries, either crinkle or the, or the, or the steak fries. Didn't oh, make no difference. Was it, was it the paper bag that got that had the grease stains coming through it? No, nah, I would go get my or out and buy it myself and fry them. Yeah, fry them, bake them, frickle them. It didn't make no difference. I wanted me some French fries <laughs> with some beer. <laughs> French fries and beer. Yeah. That I put you. it on you. Oh, man. Golly. Okay, so you were dropping anywhere from... 70 to 90 pounds. In God, all leading, Nate. That's I did this like four or five seasons in a row. That's a that's almost a that's a whole little Human. kid. Yeah, that's a whole that's a whole kid, man. <laughs> that's more than your daughter Yeah, way. that's more than my daughter <laughs> way. That's a whole person you was dropping, man. Okay, yeah. so so you did it because that that's what you had to do for football. Yeah. Okay, but now once you once you made the decision to shut it down, what what was your mindset then? Uh I was like, wow, I got up to like four four hundred pounds. And I could, you know, you young, you know, football, yeah, yeah. You, you move. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm sitting on the couch, chilling, doing a little radio show here, a little radio show there. And then I'm like, wow, man, you know, not feeling good. Yeah. You know, eating all these French fries, drinking all this beer, not feeling good. You feeling like lethargic yeah, or what yeah, was? Yeah, just, you know, lazy, you know, wanting to do things, but, you know, oh, man, I'm I'll get yeah. it tomorrow. And uh, I'm gonna tell you what really alerted me is I went to the uh, to the doctor, okay. you know, blood work and all yeah. that, cholesterol. Get back home, and then 
My phone blowing up. I'm like, I'm blank. Yeah. I finally answered the phone. It's my doctor. Okay. And, you know, 8 in the morning, it was the next day. It's just phone just blowing. I'm like, okay. Because I knew where my wife was. She had work. She go to work. She ain't calling me. Yeah. So I ain't worried about that. Sure. So I called the doctor. Like, doc, what's up, man? You blowing on my phone. Come up here right now. We're going to admit you to a hospital. I'm like, what? Your blood, your blood, your blood, sugar, and your uh, uh, high blood. Oh, man. And I'm like, okay. So I rushed up there. He said, you, you, you finna kill yourself. It was some crazy number. It was it like your A1C number or uh, was it like just your, your blood pressure? Uh, blood pressure and my sugar. <laughs> yeah. He said, you know, we gonna, we, what I'm finna do now is give you a shot of uh, insulin. insulin. Yep. Like, oh, doc. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I'm still alive. Yeah. I say, what do I need to start doing right now? Because I ain't doing all of these shots and all this. But you need to take these pills. You need to do this. You need to stop eating this and stop eating that. I like, okay. But still, you know, as time go on, yeah. I'm still kind of, you know, three eighty. Yeah, but so so, they, yeah. so you drop. Yeah, I mean, like, you drop twenty pounds. Yes, yeah, so most people, most people think, okay, twenty pounds. I say, I'm doing yeah, good. I'm do- yeah, but and you so, got to put it in perspective. You went from four hundred to, to three eighty. Right. So I'm like, okay. But it still wasn't enough, and I knew it wasn't enough. And I'm like, Lord, Lord, what am I going to do? Yeah. I ain't finna, I know I ain't going to get out here and run and walk. What am I going to do? Because now you're, you're done playing. Right, so, so I'm on, I'm on, I'm on uh, ESPN, you know, working. And, uh, you know, and we'll go on these remotes. And, uh, and I guess the guy saw me or somebody told him about it. Hey, you know, the guy named Dr. Kim. Yeah. He said, hey, man. Uh, we got a candidate for you, Nate Newton, for this gastric sleeve. Okay. I, it never crossed my mind that he called and said, hey, Nate, my name is Dr. Kim, and I can't think of, think of the guy that worked at the radio station, okay. the sponsor, the guy that got me the sponsor. I, I, I'm like, he like, man, what do you think about this gastric sleeve? I'm like, where? where? Let's do this now. But what? But what? What made you want to do it? Because, like I say, man, I was like, you was, you was just like, I'm, um, I know I'm not going to put forth the the physical the effort, effort. But the thing is, once again, you go to feeling like, and and I and the feeling was the high blood, the, the astronomical numbers with yeah. the sugar. I, I mean, it was. I'm telling you, it was off the charts. I man, I wish I could go back and get those things. Probably can from out of my records with the doc, and. uh Nature, I see you losing weight, but Nate, you got to eat better. You got to do this better. Da, da, da. And I'm like, all right, doc. I'm like, wow. So it was on my mind, bro. Yeah. And so when I met with Dr. Kim, he said, uh, you're, you're a prime candidate. And, uh, I want you to continue to try to lose weight, and we'll work together. And he said, what do you think? I said, when you want to do the surgery? Yeah. When you want to do the yeah, surgery? Let's go. I said, if you get the surgery done, I can do the rest. And... Uh, well, you got to stop drinking. You got to do this. You know, we're going to da-da-da. We'll pay you this. And, you know, da-da-da. And I said, okay, all right. So about a month later, we had the surgery. Okay. Probably about six months later. Because we did the surgery, I was at 411. Jeez. And so when we did the surgery then, probably about, because when we first went in away, you know. I was, no, no, no. What's the, no, just for people that don't know, what does this surgery do? It, they go in and they cut your stomach down. Okay. They just give you a little tube. Okay. You know, your stomach to be just a little tube. They just shrink it. Yeah. They cut it down. He the best he the best daddy, bless his heart. And, <clears throat> and so, you know, I was in, went home, you know, watch what you eat. Next day you can you're driving home, boy, you can feel everything. Mm. You know, so we get home, me and my wife, and I, you know, I told her, I said, Every cookie, every, I don't care. Get it out. I, oh, I just went off. I'm mad, not at her, but I'm mad because, Lord, oh, Jesus, what have I done to myself? Mm. So I'm like, it, but now nothing resemble anything that's bad in this house to eat. So for about seven months, and every every month I would go, every week I would go back, every month I would go back. You lost 20 pounds. You lost 25 pounds. Wow. You lost 20 pounds. And he looked, he looked at me and said, you sincere? And I said, yeah. I said, Doc, I got to get it off. I say, and I'm the type of person, I'm either all in or I'm all yeah, out. Absolutely. And so I knew I had lost weight. I, I'm looking at it, and I'm clothes getting smaller, but I knew I had lost weight when I jumped on my motorcycle about eight months later and went out to Dion's house. He lived in Prosper then. Okay. 
And I knocked on the door and he's just looking. And I'm like, man, quit joking. Let me in, man. And he called me Hoggy. Hoggy, that's you? Hoggy, you on crack? <laughs> <laughs> I had dropped down about, uh, about, about 270. What? Yeah, I had dropped down about 270. You know, changed where I ate. Four eleven. Hold on, four eleven. Uh, yeah, to two seventy. Two seventy. One hundred and forty pounds. Yeah, and so, uh, you know, and then over that's, time, that's most people listening right now, yeah. one hundred and forty pounds. Yeah, and then over time, over about three years, I went up to probably about three nineteen. Okay, and I'm like, okay, you know, I'm trying to I, find that that yeah, happy medium, happy right? Medium, because Doc said, man, get out in three hundred. And try to maintain it there. That way you can still eat. Yep. And you, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and then, uh, but, but five years later, I'm still around 320, 319, 315. You know, blood levels are better. Everything is better. I eat a little bit better. I still can eat it's a little bit of junk. Like today, now this is show Thursday, but today I went and got an apple fritter. And then I was bragging on the apple fritter to yeah. Ted and to my to my yeah. TCU guy. I can't think Ren. Yeah, yeah. I'm bragging to them, and they went and tried to get me another. I like I can't eat nah, another. Yeah, yeah, nah. You know your limits. You know, yeah, you gonna kill me. <laughs> I mean, my high blood and everything and so sugar. When I, so when yeah. I bring them donuts to the pregame yeah. show, that ain't good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's only uh, one or two at the yeah, most. Yeah, and I take the rest home. No, and, you show resistance. And, yeah, cause bro, I can't. Eat, you know that blood. But anyway, but oh, after about five years, one morning I woke up. I looked at my wife. She woke up and I was just staring at her. She said, what's wrong, babe? What's wrong? I'm like, oh, wow. And I said, God is good, man. Yeah. And she's like, what do you mean? What do you mean? I said, I ain't had a drink in five years. Wow. I ain't had And she said, well, what you want to do? Just go out and drink tonight? Have some good? I said, nah, babe. If I don't went this long. Yeah, I don't want it. I don't want it. I said, I don't need it. I said, thank you, God. That's thank awesome. you, God. And then... Over this last two years, I, you know, I like like these crackers. I eat these crackers, but then I normally I could, I'll eat two or three packs. Mm -hmm. it, it, the the the, the gorging is over. Gotcha. It's like eat one, and I can be good for two or three hours. Gotcha. And so now, I don't eat perfect, but that gorging. Yeah, yeah. Can't eat just one. That was my labor. I mean, ladies should have paid me. Yeah. Can't eat just one. They should have paid me. That was my, yeah, that was you. That was me. Wow. And now, uh, not, now I'm $299. Okay. Right where Doc wanted you yeah. originally. Yeah, $299, $301. That's awesome. Uh, so I changed the way I eat. I changed the way I do things. I go to bed earlier. You know. Sleep's important. Yeah. So, man. That's dope. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm man. glad you're able to tell the people that because... Your health is, you only get one body. You get one body, one version of yourself. And you can either mess it up or you can do the best you can with it, right? And you, mm -hmm. your, your body type was, you were, your God made you a certain body type and allows right. for you to go out there and, and, and do your profession. But after you had your profession, right, you had to make some, some real life decisions. Some oh, man. Body. Yeah, because when I was at the Carolina Panthers, the doctor told me, he said, I don't know if any of your doctors told you at Dallas. He said, You're a prime candidate for. Uh, uh, diabetes. He said, Ned, I watch how you eat. I, did, I know you're having fun and all that. He said, but when you get out of football, you better stop. Yeah. You know, I, like, I looked at Doc like, all right, Doc, you want to go drink? I mean, I had a joke for everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Doc, let me, meet me over here, man. I'll get you a six sure. pack. Yeah. You know, let's go to uh, back. They, they didn't have Popeyes. They had something else in gotcha. Carolinas. That's good, man. So, I mean, I didn't have the weight loss journey, man, but I know that I was challenged by um, Jamal Charles. Uh, speaking yeah. engagement one time, Jamal Charles challenged me to being a vegetarian. He's vegan, but he challenged yeah. me to being vegetarian. And I'm like, man, you out your dog on mine, bro. Like, I, I, all I, I stay on the grill. Right, I, I'm, right. I'm, 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 the I'm, grill master. Yeah, grill master. Big green egg, Traeger, whatever it is, yeah. it don't matter. Like, put me on the <laughs> grill, all right? I stay on the grill. Every right. weekend, people come into the house. And uh, he challenged me to, to, to go the vegan route. And I was like, okay, hold on, player. Like, give me, <laughs> give me some baby steps. He's like, okay, don't eat meat for three days. All right, I get three days, and I did three days, and I was like, ah, man, this is a little harder than I thought it was gonna be. But I was like, wait a minute, my foot doesn't hurt. Right, right. My foot surgery, you know that I had. Right, my foot right. ain't giving out on me like it used to. I'm like, man, my body, my body's not aching like it used to. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can take this thing out a week. See if I can make it happen. Took it out a week. Started seeing I was sleeping better. 
had more energy. I was like, man, doggone, there's something to this thing. And I just kept it going. I just kept it going, man. And I realized that <clears throat> that I felt better and I felt like I was healthier by not eating meat, right? That was right, just right. me. Uh, I'm not saying it's easy. You know, I might I might go back at some point in time, but it's for what it for what it's been over these past four or five years, it's been good to me, man. Right, so right, right. whatever those health health decisions are for each individual, man, I just encourage everybody to go out there and do what's best for you. As Thanksgiving is coming up. All right, we go ahead and we go ham on that day. No point intended, okay? Go ham, go turkey, whatever it is. But make sure that if there are things that you guys need to get checked out, things that you need to do for yourself, make sure that you make those decisions. You guys heard Nate Dogg's story in terms of him being, having to look himself in the mirror and say, this is what you need to do. And you had resources. Yes. Right? You had people that were invested in you. You had people right. that cared about you, that looked out for you, and you listened. You could have easily turned your back and said, oh, these cats is tripping. But you listened to them, and then you made the best decision for you. And I think that's awesome. I tell you like this, Isaiah. Uh, everything in life, I don't want to get too deep. I don't, uh, let me tell you something. I don't want to get too deep. <laughs> but how much do you value your life? Mm. For a guy, the way I lived, the way I lived from my from say age fifteen okay. to all the way to this happened about. 10, 12 years ago, I, I just, I knew I would be dead at 50. Mm. You've heard me say this before. I, I just knew the way I lived, how I treated people, how I acted. Uh, I, was, I knew one day I was going to run into that wall. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm 60, man. It's there you go. December, I'll be yeah. 61. And so. Oh, we got to do it big for 61, Nate. Yeah. We do. We, we, we got to we we do it big for your 61. As soon as football season over with. Yeah. I'm getting in my car, okay, and I can tell my wife, if you want to meet me here, yeah, on Friday I will pick you up at the airport. I fly <laughs> you out on Monday morning. That's awesome. But I'm gonna hit that road, bro. Yeah, That's I your see piece. you when I see you. That's man. your piece. Yeah. Oh come on. But 61. God you know is, why we? You know why we gotta do big on your 61? I don't know why. Why? Big Nate. That's my. I know that's my number. That's your number. That's why yeah, we gonna do it big. Number. We gonna but, do it uh, big. I'm, I'm gonna tell you something, Isaiah. It's just it, man. It's a blessing. I, I tell people, do you. Yep. But uh, do it in a healthy way. There you go. Be respectful to others. Yep. Help where you can. Uh, and always be positive for the youth. There you go. You know, and, and, and you should be all right. You know, I got advantage on most people. And, I, you know, and like I tell people, some things that I, I say with respect, and some things I don't care how you take it. But I got advantage because I got, I got Christ. Yep, there you go. So I got advantage. That's one up right there. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Y'all heard it here first, man. I love that episode, man. Y'all make sure y'all go back, listen to that. Pass it on along to somebody else who you know needs it. Sometimes those conversations are hard to be had, but Nate Dog just had it for you. So until next time, we appreciate y'all tuning in to another episode. Let me tell y'all something. We gone. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what else unhealthy. Being a Texas fan <laughs> or a Cowboy fan, that could be very unhealthy. <laughs>